Do you feel like you never have enough time in the day? You're constantly moving from meeting to appointment to commitment, and you feel like you'll never catch up with your to-do list. You work around the clock, but when the day is over, you're not sure where your time went or what you even have to show for it. And time to rest, time to care for yourself, forget about it. I know exactly how you feel. Like you're just spinning your wheels knowing that something needs to change, but not knowing how to make things better. That's why I'm gonna share with you these three common mistakes that most people make when it comes to time management. If you're making one of these mistakes, I'm gonna show you how to fix it and find success. Make sure you stick around in the end because I'm sharing how I approach time management when coaching my clients, running my business, spending time with my family, and caring for myself. Before we get started, please click the subscribe button to stay up to date on new videos for my channel. I share new videos about time management, productivity, and work-life balance every week. Now, let's talk about why you might be feeling like there's not enough time in your day. Reason number one, you use a time management method that doesn't fit your lifestyle. Most time management advice out there just isn't realistic. At least it's not realistic for me. Chances are it's not a good fit for you either. If you're watching this video, then we probably have a lot in common. Business coach and guest on It's About Time, Katie Wusso described it really well. Most time management advice is either masculine or monastic. Masculine time management books often seem like they're written by men in corporate roles who have assistants or spouses that are helping them achieve work-life balance. I don't like to perpetuate gender stereotypes or make assumptions, but if you read some of these time management books or content, it really seems like these guys just aren't the default parent that's the one driving their kid to appointments. You know, the parent that plans birthday parties and buys the holiday gifts, the one who keeps the house stocked with groceries and toiletries. You know what I mean? And the books that aren't overly masculine are monastic, as in isolated, like monks in a monastery. If you've ever rolled your eyes at a time management method that tells you to put your phone on airplane mode while you work, then you've come across a monastic time management method. I have two toddlers. It is just not realistic for me to turn my phone off or even put it in airplane mode. I have to be available and I'm sure you have similar commitments. And by the way, if you wanna hear more about what Katie and I discuss when it comes to time management methods, I've dropped a link to that podcast episode down in the description below. So if neither of these methods match your lifestyle, they simply won't work for you. But that's not your fault. We all have unique challenges, careers, and obligations. That's why time management isn't something that can just be copied and pasted to the same amount of success. You have to find a time management system and make it yours. Another reason you're probably struggling to manage your time is reason number two. You're giving up too quickly. Time management methods aren't an instant gratification kind of thing. I mean, it can be if you cancel all your meetings, delete your social media and throw your phone out the window. But like I said before, that's super unrealistic. Instead, I want you to imagine time management like you're peeling back the layers of an onion. One thing changes and then another and then another until you look around one day and realize that you feel calm, prepared and ready to tackle your day. Maybe you've gotten into a groove doing weekly planning sessions. I actually talked about that in my previous video if you'd like to take a look. You feel like you actually do have enough time to accomplish everything that you want to. And best of all, you're spending a lot more time on the things that matter most to you. Rarely, if ever, will a time management strategy change your life immediately. Be patient and let it work its magic. Last but not least, your chosen time management strategy might not be working for you because of reason number three you're starting in the wrong place. The biggest misconception that I hear about time management all the time is that it starts on the pages of your calendar, that all you need to do is fix the weeks and months ahead, rearrange things on the pages of your calendar, just get to that next deadline and everything will be fine. That if you try this one amazing productivity hack or buy this specific planner, then your time management and productivivity will go through the roof. Nope not gonna happen. Now, I'm not telling you to throw away your planner or delete your Google Calendar and give up. Instead, I'm encouraging you to go 
deeper. A good time management method, one that fits your life and is sustainable, that starts somewhere else. It starts with what matters most to you. Are you still with me? Good. I want to share you how I manage my time in my personal life with my time management coaching clients and in workshops and speaking engagements. I approach time management with heart. Rather than just moving things around on your calendar or editing your to-do list for the 37th time, we've all been there. It's managing time from your heart. The heart method doesn't assume that you have a wife at home to handle life for you or that you can go off the grid for hours or days at a time to get things done. The heart method has three parts. First, you need to get clear on your vision and values. What do you imagine your future to be? What are your core values? Do you want to spend more time with your kids and less time working? Do you want to save a certain amount of money for retirement? Do you want to start your own business and be your own boss? These are all examples of a vision for your future. On a similar note, you may value time with loved ones, financial stability, freedom and flexibility in your career. Knowing where you want to go will help you create a solid foundation for your life. Decision making becomes easier and you're more confident about what to do with your time right now because you know what you want and where you're going. Second, you have to create a plan. This involves setting goals and making a plan for each goal so they're more doable and less overwhelming. Let's say you wanna go back to school to get your master's degree. Before you even think about starting school and studying to get that degree, there's a lot to do. There are a lot of steps between point A and point B. You have to break those steps down piece by piece, day by day, and then work toward them day by day, piece by piece. Otherwise, the whole idea of going back to school will seem so insurmountable that you'll never get started. Finally, you have to live each day with heart. That's right, the heart in my heart method is an acronym. It stands for H for habits, cultivating good habits. E for energy, harnessing your energy. A for attention, focusing your attention. R for recharge, rest, recreation, and relationships. T for time management. That one's self-explanatory. Let me tell you, it blew my mind when I realized that the five key elements for better work-life balance spelled out the word heart. When I connected all the dots, I was actually up late at night reading a book about productivity. Shocker, I know. In this book, the author said that the three key ingredients for productivity were energy, attention, and rest. And at that moment, I couldn't help but think, no, there's more to it than that. You need good habits. You need to implement those habits with a cue, a routine, and a reward. You need to make time for fun. And that's when it hit me. Habits, energy, attention, recharge, and time. Heart. That's what enabled me to start a business, launch a podcast, raise a family, and now start a YouTube channel so I can share my knowledge with you. So if your current time management method isn't working, there are three possible reasons why. The method you chose may not work well for your life, and that's not your fault. You just need one that better aligns with your values and goals. Or you may need to practice more patience. Remember, time management isn't a quick fix. If you've picked the right strategy, give it some time before you ditch it. Or you're starting in the wrong place. Moving things around on your calendar and rearranging your to-do list might get you through a temporary season of overwhelm, but it's not a long-lasting strategy. The heart method is, and you might find that it's a better fit for your lifestyle or that you're more inclined to take your time and let it work its magic. When you have a clear vision and a plan, you can handle just about any challenge that life throws at you with habits, energy, attention, recharge, and of course, time management. Heart. If you've been struggling to find a time management method that really fits, I encourage you to give the heart method a try. I have the heart method roadmap to help you get started. It's a free visual guide that can help you take action on a strategy now, instead of continuing to waste time on a strategy that isn't working for you. The heart method roadmap is linked down in the description below, so get yours now. What do you struggle with when it comes to time management? What questions do you have? 
post a comment down below and let's chat about it. Oh, and remember to hit subscribe so you can catch my next video. Thanks for watching.